This is Nassim Miller reporting from the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists in Philadelphia. I spoke with Dr. Jay Cohen about the growing rate of type 2 diabetes in children and adolescents. When most of us were in training, the idea of adult onset or type 2 diabetes was a disease that was considered for people who were over 40, overweight, with a family history of diabetes. Gradually, over the last 15 to 18 years, we started seeing people with diabetes, quote, type 2, in their 20s and 30s. And then over the last 10 years, starting to see teenagers and preteens with what we used to call adult onset diabetes, now type 2, with development of this disorder. And so we don't call it adult onset anymore because we've got 12 year olds and 9 year olds and 14 year olds with this type of diabetes. Why? Because we've seen a explosion in, the, in, in uh, obesity and that obesity is leading to resistance of insulin with higher blood sugars and development of diabetes. This has been a crisis. It's a crisis for our society because of the increased risk of premature kidney disease, heart disease, foot problems, eye damage, etc. And we are seeing it in real life. It economically is a crisis because the cost to our society as a whole are huge. It's also a crisis for families and for these kids themselves. We've looked at workforce needs and demands and what we found is that there are not enough adult endocrinologists because the instance of diabetes is overwhelming our medical system. But the crisis is even more in the pediatric endocrine realm, where there are even less pediatric endocrinologists. At one of the university uh, children's hospitals in Dallas, as an example, uh, discussing with them, they have a waiting list of over 1,100 families just to get into their obesity and diabetes clinic. So they're overwhelmed, they can't even get them into the clinic. They've got such a waiting list in that regard. I think we need to keep this on the front burner. Let's get involved, our primary care physicians, our specialists, our parents, our teachers, our educators, as well as our political people, as well as our business people, to work together and say it's in our long-term best good to have healthy kids so we can have healthy adults and really make a change.